All right, good evening, everybody, or whatever time it is, whenever you're watching this video. Um, this is Drew here at Treehouse. Today, this month, we're happy to feature the team from Lost Not Found magazine. Um, you can see on the wall behind me, we have some photography uh, featured from some of their featured photographers from previous issue with a spotlight on Brooke Berry, who is has the featured portfolio in um, this new issue, issue three of Lost Not Found. I guess it's uh, volume two, issue one. Is that yeah. accurate? Cool. Um, so on board on the Zoom call today, we have Mike and Kiyoki, who are the, the team, the brains and heart, um, the pen and the camera behind a lot of Lost Not Found, uh, as well as Brooke Berry, this latest issue's featured photographer. Um, so yeah, without further ado, super stoked to have these guys. I'm going to turn it over to Mike and Kiyoki. Hey there, thank you guys for joining. Um, we really, really, sorry, really appreciate your guys' time. And um, yeah, you know, um, we, we're Lost Not Found Magazine. We're just, you know, two guys with a passion. Um, we, you know, what the magazine about is our mission is like, we, we like to go like on the unbeaten path. We like to follow the swells. We like, we like to bring you, you know, stories, you know, that you won't find in normal digital society and put them in a medium to where you can actually enjoy, you know, and slow time down and like enjoy the media that you're, you know, you're, um, you're looking at, you know, look at photos in a bigger format um, and, you know, read the stories in a slower pace. So it's actually, uh, it's, I guess you can kind of say in this time and age is going against the grain, but, you know, we're, we're core. And we love what we do. So with the digital age coming, we don't want to lose sight of that. We want to keep it, you know, um, still in, you know, circulation around the world. And we're going to do the best we can to, to bring those stories with you. Um, we like to, you know, we like to focus, you know, on the alternative side of surfing, not necessarily, you know, the mainstream side of surfing, but because we like to incorporate different mediums outside of surfing as well, like including art, um, we try to incorporate music and in, in, in print form in ways that we can, you know, without sound. But, you know, we also like to dabble a lot into film photography. You know, we believe that film is a huge part of photography. And it's almost um, at a moment, it seemed like it was dying. But with the resurgence of film now, it's like a lot more people are enjoying, you know, the, I guess, what you can say, the, the informalities, the, the inconsistencies with film and compared to, you know, digital media where it's easily manipulable. Um, so that kind of brings an authenticity to, to their work. And we like to portray that in our print media. Um, my name is uh, Kiyoki. Um, I've been part of media or print media for a good part of 10 years. Um, I work with in Hawaii um, with Research Magazine for a good six years. And then I was, you know, part of their staff photographer. Then I became the photo editor and then I was in the editor. And then I've been working in the editorial realm ever since, you know, with Surfline, um, with different mediums around the world. So starting a print magazine was one way to stay true to my roots and what I love to do. And I just thought it was a fun project. And, you know, including, you know, Mike along, you know, he he had the same kind of passion for print media and photography. So including him was a necessity to make this magazine work. So yeah, here's Mike. Hi, um, my name is uh, Mike Ito, um, born and raised uh, in Aia, Oahu. Um, and uh, a couple, uh, uh, let me tell you a little bit about, I guess, how Kiyoki and I met to start um, Lost Not Found. Um, so a couple of years, almost three years ago, he and I traveled for the first time um, to uh, um, a longboarding event called the Mexi Log Fest. And, and there was so much, I guess, long story short, there's so much positive vibes and people from all over the world um, coming to this event and and surfing and having a good time. And uh, what we were doing was 
just covering it and shooting it and we we're and we we're having a, a great time as well and we you know we got to talking about how we could um you know preserve that feeling and and document everything and i guess in a nutshell that's how uh lost not found was born um the magazine anyway um i've i've been shooting in the water for uh this is um i think my fourth or fifth season now um and my background is graphic design so my dream job has always been about oh and i've been i grew up surfing and you know i've been surfing my entire life so graphic design print surfing and photography was always on my the back of my mind and then linking up with kyoki and thinking about this magazine just made sense for us to you know i guess take a stab at it um and see where we would end up um and uh before before starting the a year about a year before i had actually left my corporate job you know i paid well and uh and it was nice you know it was a nice thing but um my kids were young at that time and you know i would wake up i would wake up and go to work in the dark and come home in the dark and you know five years later my son's face had changed and i didn't realize that i was just had my head in in work all day and and you know there had to be something more to life than just doing that so i quit and uh, my passion was photography and surfing and i got in the water um came across kiyoki who really i look up to as a mentor and kind of taught me the ropes and a lot of things that i know and uh and here we are um so that's kind of my history <laughs> Right. You know, like we when when we and I started, it was kind of like a um, it was a mutual thing, you know. We kind of like agreed upon it, and we we took it as one of those things to like just follow your dreams. Um, it's something where we, you know we've seen during this time and age where like a lot of people following their dreams, you know they they tend to be, I guess, successful in whatever they're doing. And so we kind of want to follow our dreams, follow that path. And if we follow our dreams and be, you know, open and truthful and, you know, promote what we want to do, like, eventually we can turn it into something legitimate. And we are so stoked that, you know, Lost Not Found, even though um, as small as we are, like, we're very, we're very thankful for every little subscriber. I mean, sorry, every little, every subscriber, every every um confrontation every um meetings you know that we have with people so we enjoy like we enjoy this and this is why we love to do what we love and you know the travel and all that i think that's the bonus part of what we you know what we're doing so um so yeah so we're just two simple guys following our dreams um i am i'm at the magazine i'm the editor of the magazine so what my main job is is I like to source, you know, content, you know, I like to look, you know, I look, I look through old magazines, I look through Instagram, I read, I read on the internet for other sources, different writers, different, you know, takes on what's going on in the world, especially like with um, artists too, like new emerging artists or artists that, um, you know, that are eccentric in the old way, in their own, you know, unique way. So I like to look for, you um, you know, unique and different ways of how to tell their stories um, in the sense of including, you know, their their art is, you know, the main drive, but what is it behind their art and why do they create the art the way that they create it? To me, that is what is makes a feature in the magazine. Also, with the stories, what I like to do is I like to source creative photographers to help document it in print media. Um, I'm trying on a light here, if that helps. Um, we like to source, um, you know, 
photographers, like if we can, and we've been successful lately, uh, film photographers. I, I really believe that film has this look in print media that, you know, is very authentic. It really brings you into the story itself. Accompany that with a great writer, you know, with a good storyline, they complement each other. And um, one example that I wanted to bring up in our issue number, um, our number two, we did a story with Brian Bent. He is a uh, California, he's from California. He's a surfer, but also he's into hot rods. He's also into shaping boards. He's also into music. So he's this really eccentric guy that taps all these different mediums in, in art. Um, what we did was we reached out to Mara Paisel who wrote an amazing story. Um, a great writer, you know, she's from Santa Barbara. She currently lives in Hawaii. She, she brought Brian Bent's story to life accompanying with photographer Titus Hogg. Um, he's a California film photographer. And what we did was I wanted him to shoot the entire project in film. So what we did was um, he shot the entire project in black and white and colored 35 millimeter film. Um, you know, in the water, he shot, um, this shot was, you know, in Brian, one of Brian's cars. And this was the opening shot for the story um, in our issue number two. Um, the next shot, I really liked this shot because it was in his studio and, you know, natural light, there was no manipulation whatsoever. 35 millimeter film. Um, I, I can't remember what camera he shot it on um, or exactly, you know, what film stock, home stock it was. But uh, when I received the photos, I mean, the grain was was nice. It was when we blew it up for print. It was even um, even more amazing. So it worked well. This is another photo of Brian. You know, with his hot rods and skateboards. He's, you know, he's just one of those eccentric guys. You know, in California, who just does everything about you know surf and skating culture, art. Um, really cool guy. Um, really great enthusiasm. Yeah, nothing nothing bad to say about this guy. So here's Titus, you know, I think he, I believe he shoots with his um, Nikonos um, 35 mil um, in the water. So this is one of the days they call this board a kook box. Um, it was like a, like a hollow board inside and Brian made it. So he took it out for a spin and Titus was there. So this is a really good example of the kind of stories that we look for, you know, with film and it, um, it definitely adds a quality of like authenticity, like I said, but it also brings out the story in a more, you know, pleasing, more subtle, yet true to what the story or the future is about. Um, in our first issue, we featured a uh, California, you know, surfer and photographer, Dane Peterson. Um, I, I knew Dane, through surfing over the past you know 30 30 plus years and I looked up to him as a surfer but when he got into photography you could really see his creative you know his creativeness to take off so he's um he's a well-known photographer he's still shooting in um in California but he he mostly shoots with the medium format um film so it was just pleasing to kind of have you know Dane in the back of my mind to use him for the first issue and the shot of, you know, Jared Mel on the cover with him smoking this shot right here was something that represents, you know, what we kind of wanted to portray in the magazine and the message we wanted to tell. Like we didn't care about, you know, what, you know, it should look like through the media with, um, you know, with all these rules of like, you know, no smoking and, and all these other oh, rules. Like, this is what we were about. Like, it was, we looked at it as, as art. You know, the character that Jared Mel is, if you understand that he's very eccentric, very stylish, he's his very own, you know, unique person. So, this moment, you know, speaks, this is Jared, you know, but at the same time, Dane, the way that he captured it, you know, with, you know, the smoke and it's, it brings out both qualities in both of these characters. 
here's another shot of um i believe it's jared mail in indonesia um i think this is on 35 millimeter black and white film as well I uh, I believe this could be Matt Kudihi out in Australia. If that serves me right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. You know, slow motion burr on film, Alex Nose. This is like these kind of images, like with Alex Nose, you know, with a single fin, you know, his shorts, you know, the wave with nobody around. It's literally a leap back into time. To get these kind of images in today's world where it actually, you know, skips generations back, it's, it's very hard to do that. So when I seen this image coming through as a submission, I took to it really, like, really well, just because it's, it's, it's modern, it's in the 2000s, but yet it's a flashback to the 70s, something that, you know, for me, I wasn't born during that time. So I would never, I never had the opportunity to go in photography, surfing, or the surfing culture during that time. And I love that era because the style you know the equipment it was like it was all for fun you know there was there was you know the business side of the contest and the business side of you know media and sponsors it was there was just emerging but to be a surfer you had to be a core surfer like you you wanted to go to hawaii you wanted to surf the big waves you know you wanted to get all these spots you know that were empty you wanted to find spots that could you know you could name all these new spots so this is one an era where I believe surfing was like pl plethora, I guess, into the world. So, you know, me not being able to be there, I thought it was a good rendition of having, you know, a blast from the past, I guess, is what you can say. Yeah, this is Jared Mel, Janet Nusa. I'm not sure what film that is, but <coughs> excuse me. And yeah, Dane, Dane is a really good inspiration. He's still, he's still willing to contribute. He's a really great guy, but he's a really, um, you know, great person, you know, as well. Great shaper. Now he's shaping his board. So yeah, he's a, he's a really good person. And we're, we're stuck to have him in issue one. And our, um, our issue number two, we're, we have, you know, a really good friend of ours, um, John Hook. I knew John for, Oh, maybe the better part of seven years now, I would say. And I've always looked up to his work. You know, his work is very, you know, authentic Hawaii, um, very fun, I guess the, the perfect word for it is. And it really shows, it shows his personality. And, um, you know, he's, a, he's very creative, like in, uh, of course, in his unique way, but he, he's always, he's always thinking, he's always on top of things. And that's the thing about John. It's like he's he knows how to be creative in everyday situations. Um, this shot we it was actually it was a contemplation for for the cover of issue number two between Mike and I, just because of the the meaning of what we were going for. And sorry, yeah. And John's you know portrayal of like him reaching to the sky, like being underwater. This is what we were like. It's something simple you know, shot on film. So it was even, it was even better. It had it had this authentic feel to it. It really made you feel like you're underwater. So we considered this shot as one of the um, options for our second issue. Um, unfortunately, not unfortunately, but fortunately and unfortunately, we did have a, um, another option. Okay, all right, so. Let's see where we're at. Uh, this is the Waimea Eddie Akau underneath water, black and white, shooting black and white underneath water is such a good way of contract, contrast. John Hook's double exposures, I mean, he kind of, he's a maestro at these things, man. He's, he's awesome. He knows how to use both, you know, sides of, you know, I mean, using whatever he, shoots with and he knows how to complement that with you know adding these two photos and they with his latest um double exposure work that you can see it really complements each other and it's just amazing what he can do uh yeah this is our uh cover of our issue number two um 
we were stoked about it because it's one of John's photos taken out, you know, at nighttime. You know, he had a flash in the water, you know, it was with film. So it created all this, you know, unique look and that we wanted to feature, you know, somebody that said surfing and having Lula Hia on the cover, you know, taken by John, like this is a perfect com complimenting photo to really express what we wanted to say in the issue. So amongst the other, with the hand, you know, above the water, this was actually the photo that trumped it. So we were stoked to feature this photo as our number, issue number two cover. So here's another John's, one of John's double exposure photos. Very cool, Waikiki and I forget where he did the underwater stuff, but different perspective. Kind of looks a little <coughs> dark, and um, but it's very unique. And this is what I really look for in um, you know, photo selects, just creativity out, out the yin yang. Okay, so for our issue number three, we we decided to do a um, a female themed issue. We partnered with companies, um, the SIA and Aquila Aipa to, to help, you know, get our message out there. And for issue number three, we, we featured, a, um, we had a guest editor, Leah Dawson, um, help with the issue. So she wrote an amazing story on how surfing um, as medicine it actually helps us, you know, become better in health and, you know, just better around human beings is a great story. Um, we also have, we have, sorry, the powers of surfing. It's a, it's a surf charity, surf group, um, kind of females, um, individuals who, who come together to bring awareness to, to surfing communities around the world um with what they're actually doing in their own communities so textured waves we we touched up up on them they're um they're bringing black awareness to the ocean by using surfing as their their um, engine to help promote black awareness in the surfing community um we also feature surf ar negra it's Gigi lucas and she has a program where we, or we're, we're actually, they have, um, sorry, they get funds to help inner city community girls out into the ocean to help them experience the ocean for the first time and open their minds to actually, you know, reach their dreams to whatever they can do by using surfing because, you know, the metaphor the mentality of you know inner city folks or, or black people in the ocean never really meshed well and then she she's seen that you know being born in costa rica i'm sorry living in costa rica um she she's seen that so she wanted to change that in america so that's what she's doing with surf area negra it's a really great program you should um you know check out their instagram really really great um and we also have um sorry excuse me we feature, sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit nervous. I'm still nervous, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, sorry, Mike, can you take it from here? <laughs> I'm so sorry. So, hold on a sec. Let me just show some quick screenshots from our website. So you, if you go to our website, this is where you would subscribe. Um, and I'll just quickly run you through uh, our current issue where Kiyoki left off. Um, so um, again, surfing as medicine. We also featured our artist, uh, Kate Berrettini um, from South Carolina. Um, and uh, the powers of surfing with Surf Negra. Uh, 
um, Changing Tides Foundation with Leah Dawson uh, and um, Textured Waves. Um, and uh, we also feature, of course, our uh, special um, guest, um, Brooke Berry as well, uh, in, in this issue. Um, we also have a, a gallery uh, show, showcasing a lot of women surfers as well as uh, photographers. Um, and then for our final in touch section, um, just a kind of a photo story from from Krista Funk. Um, so yeah, that's our that's our last uh, our current issue that you can subscribe on our website. <laughs> So, okay, um, we have here with us joining, we have our future photographer, um, Brooke Berry. I've known Brooke for, shoot, how long now, Brooke? 20 something years plus? Don't, don't age us, Kaoki. <laughs> <laughs> we're only 18, remember? Right, right, yeah, we're still 18 in our mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I know Brooke for the best better part of 20 years her and her husband key we have two beautiful children um i've always looked up to her photography she, she's a very creative individual um she has different ways of bringing the island lifestyle you know in very subtle unique powerful moments and um so yeah brooke um uh who are you when did when did you start when did you start um shooting photography who am I? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, well, let's see. I started shooting, I want to say, honestly, when I was in elementary school, like I was about 11 years old and I started shooting photos and um, I mostly started just like taking my film camera around and documenting whatever an 11 year old does in their daily life, play at the playground, like play with my friends and um, get my film developed at longs or something like that. So, um, yeah, I kind of just loved being that annoying person that was always taking photos, but that everyone was thankful for at the end because they had all the photos they wanted. Um, and I didn't have photography as an option for a major. I went to Chapman University, so I ended up graduating with a degree in graphic design, which I never really did use professionally, um, but I mean, it's a good thing to have on handy, I guess. It helped me learn the programs and stuff like that. So yeah, ever since then, I've been shooting professionally since about like 2010, but I've always been shooting film and digital photos and just, just makes me so happy. You've, you've probably seen the film and digital transition. How did that go about? For you when it came to work and your creative approach to photography? I think for me I was like young and super excited it was like an exciting thing to like um experience because it was so new um I was probably around 18 or 19 when I got my first digital camera uh, that I was actually shooting photos with for work type of things. And so um, just how instant the gratification was of seeing what I was producing was amazing. Um, I, it had so many benefits, especially career-wise. But of course, you know, we reach a point where it's just not enough anymore. And we find ourselves going backwards, which is funny in my, in my eyes. But um, I am happy to be back shooting film. It was like a really big gap where I wasn't doing it anymore just because it really didn't fit into um, what I was trying to accomplish with work. But um, I never really lost that that love for it. And I always had a film camera around to, to document life, but to be able to reintroduce it into like what I'm doing for work is is really fun. And film is film is the best. It has such a different quality to it. And yeah, I'm happy to be doing it again, for sure. What, what do you, 
what kind of film stocks do you like to shoot with when it comes to just like everyday documenting to um, have to so maybe some of your, you know, film stocks you can use for work? Um, what do you like to go to? What do you, what's your favorite? Right now, I feel like I just shoot with whatever I can get my paws on. Um, a lot of film is like back ordered or it's hard to get, especially in Hawaii. So um, I've kind of always been this way, but I'll just shoot like with whatever I have. Like I love shooting Polaroids. I love shooting disposable cameras, water, like disposable cameras. Uh, I love like Portra 400. Um, that's kind of like my main one that I'll use for work stuff. But honestly, like I love getting all different kinds of qualities. And for me, it doesn't really matter what film stock I have. Like, I just love whatever, it, like that's the point of film. Like whatever it comes out as is like the product. So that's been fun for me. Like this right here is a disposable camera, you know, probably something I got at Walmart. I don't know. So I love the way it turned out and it's always fun getting film developed because you can get a shot like this where I'm like, wow, it actually is kind of, in focus and you know the exposure is all right like cool it's far what what can you say to people aspiring to be um photographers like what is some advice you know that you can give that you you know are willing to share for me it's always been about authenticity um there's a lot out there right now. There's a lot to look at. We're constantly looking at other people's work. Um, we're just bombarded by, you know, you can see everything now. And I think when I started shooting, like I, I would only look at magazines. Like I would look at Vogue and I would look at, you know, Surfer and stuff like that. And I think to be able to kind of marry those two, um, those two concepts in my life have been like kind of what I like to do or like the look and feel I like. Um, but I think that's because that's like truly what I love and what I love to, to see myself. Um, it's easy to kind of look at other photographers or artists or whatever industry you're in and, you know, be inspired by what they do. And maybe your work ends up looking like someone else's, but I think the key is always doing what is authentic and genuine for you and your eye and your aesthetic and that's what's gonna that's what's gonna show through right. um, and how how would you how do you use social media as um to help benefit you you know with your work and what you like to portray and um you like to share like what what is the biggest benefit of social media has been for you um social media has been the bane of my existence it's been <laughs> it's <laughs> it's been so good for for me professionally um i feel like i kind of got in at a good lucky time um <laughs> since then you know my followers have been dropping like flies but it's kind of like forced me to reevaluate like what I'm doing and what I'm putting out there, what I care for uh, the people that do follow me um, to see and what best represents what I do. It's easy to get caught up in, you know, all the things that come with social media. But um, just as I get older, I think I'm just realizing that Yes, it is a way for people to see my work. Um, they can also see my work on my portfolio, on my website, but it the reality is that this is how people find you these days, right? And so making sure I put out what I want to be seen as. Um, I don't put a lot of my personal life on social media, but um, it has definitely helped me in traveling. It's given me so many opportunities to work for companies um, that I never ever thought I could. So in that regard, I'm very, very thankful for it. But I think it's easy to get caught up in it and it's easy to feel um, like your value is less if you you know, don't have the followers or the engagement, um, the likes and stuff like that. So I think just remembering like who you are and what it is that you're trying to um, 
put out there is important and that's the most important thing. Thank you. Thanks for sharing with us. You know, Grace, you know, being a new mom, uh, two, two babies, <laughs> you know, a lot of the times friend with family, but, you know, we really appreciate your time spending, you know, with us here and, you know, you know, get to show your work in our issue number three. We're super stoked to have, you know, you'll be a part of that. And, um, you know, thank you. Thank you for everything, your time, you know, your effort, and, you know, of course, inspiring all of us to do your work. So, Mahalo, thank Mark. you. I'm so stoked. Thanks. Um, I got a couple questions actually um, that, that I can, I think we can just ask her right now. Um, and I think she's um, on, the, on the live cast right now, Haley Erin. Um, but she left a couple questions for you, Brooke. Um, and I actually, she left three up. Um, I think we can get through it all. Um, so her, one of her questions is, which I like is, what is the root of your inspiration currently? Does it change and how do you stay true? Hi, Haley. Let's get those purple lights back on, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I was like, dang, I'm jealous. I have like a boring white wall. Um, so yeah, what is, I mean, for me, like it's always about um, what's, what's true to my lifestyle, right? So um, I feel most comfortable shooting in Hawaii and on the beach and the surf and the water and stuff like that. So that for me is like key. Like I feel like I wouldn't be an authentic photographer if I was trying to do anything other than that. And so I'm constantly inspired by nature and the ocean specifically. Um, I mean, for me, I'm lucky enough to have friends like this that, uh, you know, like Mahina and Malia that are always down to be creative and it helps me practice um, my craft, right? And I think that's been super important, like finding those people who, who inspire you in return. And, and um, you can have like this really fun relationship where, you know, you get to make art like this. And I think that's been a huge part of my journey is just the people that I've been able to work with that continue to show up and, and inspire me really. So, yeah. Nice. Um, and her other question was, what's your best advice for a young creator, uh, 21, um, committed long-term trying to build a career? 21, girl, you are, I'm so jealous. <laughs> um, so for me, the thing that has helped me the most in my career was actually finding the people to mentor me, um, assisting and showing up for other photographers who have already like gone through this, this journey. Um, there are so many people that have helped me along the way and I, I really can't like say that I, you know, am where I am today doing what I love without their help because, you know, they were opening doors for me and showing me how to work my equipment, showing me what it means to be a working photographer. And I think that's the difference, right? So I think for me, it's always finding, finding someone to show me the way. And I'm so grateful for those people who have done that for me, because I really think that's something that is missing right now is people think you can get to step 10 without going through all the other ones. And that's really not how this works. And you know, you, you won't have the longevity of a career if you do it that way. So I think if you are in it for the long haul, you find those people that, you know, you can maybe assist or um, learn from, and that's really going to go a long way. I like that. Yeah, me too. Um, and then just a quick other note she put, um, uh, true to your origina originality as a creator. Uh, I'm not uh, sorry, I'm going to interrupt. I was just like finishing the last question or the first question. I can't remember what I wrote, but like, I think 
mainly I just wanted to ask like how you stay true to like your originality and like how you find your authenticity I guess but you kind of already answered that but (laughs) if you have anything to add I mean yeah I think I kind of touched on that it's just what it is that makes you unique you know and then showing that through your work because I think especially now people can kind of sniff out you know that um inauthentic person that's trying to portray their life as something else and um you'll just go far being who you are and so that's super important especially with photography I think because only you'll have that eye you know so yeah yeah I love how you say that too because like how you're touching on like that when you're growing up like you were looking at like parrot or what was it vogue and um surfer and like I don't know you just like already had like such a clear vision for what you wanted to do with your life it seems like like you recognize the things that you were drawn to and just have been like growing from that ever since and so I don't know like for me I've like I'm currently in Hawaii but like I'm from the mainland and so like just moving place to place like I've definitely like been drawn to different things so I think like as I'm evolving to different passions like I can see like how I'm shooting and like I don't know growing up like I was shooting digital just because I'm so young and then like transitioning to like finding film like five or so years ago like it's just been (laughs) different to like like I I know that I'm still not like I haven't like found what I I don't know found myself completely as like someone who is actively shooting film and actively like shooting stuff that I don't know especially just moving around that makes sense so I just wanted to hear your take on that yeah I mean I think like as an artist or as as a creative like it's a never-ending journey right like we're never arriving so um it doesn't matter where you're at right now um you know at 21 I was still in college I didn't know what I was going to do I didn't think I could ever be a photographer like that came a lot later Mm -hmm. um it's just for me it was just practicing and doing what I love and I think when you put those two things together like you can never fail right so um yeah I'm excited for you because you really are still at the very very beginning and we have a whole life to do this and so um just keep going because it's just only going to get better and you're going to have more experiences and keep shooting and yeah it's exciting thank you I love that <laughs> thanks Haley yeah um actually this question just came in and uh I think we all know that you surf um Brooke so this person is asking this uh his name is Kala Thurston I'm not sure if you know him or not. <laughs> no, I don't know him. No, he's my little brother. <laughs> oh, he is. Uh, he's asking, do you have a hard time shooting if the waves are really good? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he's asking for himself, I'm sure. He wants the shots. Um, I think right now I actually enjoy shooting more if the waves are good. Um I've been pregnant for like the last two years. And so I've kind of been beached on been shooting in the water a lot more and not being able to surf as much. And so I do really find that um, creating is just as fun, if not more fun and exciting for me than surfing right now. Um, But of course, obviously like if the waves are good, it's really, I'm probably going to surf if I don't need to be shooting, but you know, like I love going out and seeing all my friends and getting photos for them. That's super fun for me. And just documenting like those moments in time where, you know, how, if I'm surfing and no one's shooting, then we're not going to have any photos. And like, I get like this weird FOMO about that, but um, yeah, I think right now, like it's kind of equal. <laughs> nice. Um, Actually, I have a question. Oh, is it hard? Uh, Don't ask me a hard question, Mike. No, it's not a hard question. Um, so I noticed that in a lot of your work, you you have a lot of film photography that you do. 
um and and you know some parts of your photography is like shooting surfing like you said with your friends and stuff um i guess maybe compared to digital how does film benefit you more what do you get out of shooting film in the water versus digital oh i think film i feel like <laughs> this is weird i feel like a lot more accomplished when i can get a good shot on film um so shooting film in the water is super challenging shooting digital i can have my finger on the trigger for 100 frames and you know i'm taking maybe one frame out of that and so it's like this um for me it's a it's a challenge and it's 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 that practice you know like that repetition of um learning my settings and lining myself up and um yeah so when i get a good shot it's like winning the lottery because it's actually really hard to do that you know so when i see the photos in your guys magazine of you know like these shots that dane took i'm just like it's blowing my mind because i know how hard that is and maybe someone just opening it doesn't really understand that but I do and I'm like so impressed and so that's that's fun for me to do um in general even just shooting models like it's hard to get a good shot on film and when you do it's like it's like christmas for sure <laughs> um actually there's one uh, I don't know how much time we have left um but this one is from Brock Lad um he, who's also in our live cast right now. He asks, uh, do you remember when the moment was that you took the one photo that made you go, oh, this is what I want to do oh, man. as a career? Look at your dog too, Brock. <laughs> um, that's really hard to pinpoint. Um, but Mike, I think you have that photo of Nathan and John and Kieran. This photo just like makes me so happy. Um, it also makes me feel really old because they're all married now. Um, and I feel like I was I was 18 when I took that that photo and they were oh. like they're, so, they're like groms, right? Look at them. So cute. It's out of focus, like whatever, but <laughs> this makes me um i think this was kind of a photo that i was and a moment that i was like you know i don't know these groms like are they gonna be somebody one day and then now look we have john winning Oliva today and they're just all amazing humans and really accomplished surfers and um marrying those two parts of my life like photography and surfing and being on the north shore um working in the surf industry like that was all I wanted to do. And to be able to be doing that right now is, is a dream. Um, it's a small community, but it's like really hard to um, kind of not make it, but like enter in, you know, be accepted. And so just to be walking the bike path and see these groms and ask them to take a photo, like that kind of where I was like okay I can do this like I can talk to people like they're 12 years old like I can take photos of people I don't have to be scared um that was a moment that I was like okay this is something like I really enjoy doing and I love people and I love faces and moments and so this is a fun this is a fun photo yeah awesome um okay Kyoki, is there anything uh else that you wanted to go through let me see where we're at yeah um can you just maybe, maybe mention the giveaways that we have for issue three okay so um we have uh three giveaways going at the moment so this first week um ends uh this friday um so i guess one more full week and we're giving away a poster by kyla ogawa um she who illustrated um and signed it 
Um, and also, I think it's our issue number three as well as a calendar. And then the second week after that, uh, we have another giveaway, um, which is our calendar and, and the latest issue. Um, also a, two, a $200 gift card for um, uh, SIA, uh, women's swimwear brand who has been helping us with this one issue. Um, and so you can use the gift card and go get a SEAL suit. Um, and our third giveaway. We also, we're also going to be giving away with this, uh, the second yeah, yeah, yeah. prize is the camera. Uh, <laughs> You're really lagging. Yeah, okay. 35 millimeter film camera. What's that? No, you're lagging. So yeah, we also have a, a kind of a point and shoot uh, 35 millimeter um, film camera along with the second week's uh, prize pack. Um, and we'll also have a uh, film available with it too. And for the final week, we have um, along with those prizes, ex except for the um, the camera, of course, is another gift card from SIA uh, for more swimsuits and as well as a, a five, six, last not found surfboards uh, fish um, that you can, that is available at currently at Treehouse to, to take a look at it if you wanted to take a look at it. Um, so yeah, uh, a month full of giveaways because it's, it's, it's the month of giving. There's the board. Oh, sick, yeah. That's the board. Yeah, Drew. <laughs> 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 On it. Dimensions there. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys, for sharing, Mike and Kiyoki and Brooke. Um, great conversation. Uh, I'm wondering, Mike and Kiyoki and Brooke, you can throw in on this too if you want, but for just hearing, like, Kiyoki, when you're talking about the magazine, um, both of you guys, it, it gets, you can tell how personal it is, um, how much of a passion project this is, but I'm one thing that was sticking with me was looking back at that Kiyoki's note on the, the kind of timeless idea of a lot of the images or the kind of the vibe you're going for, the, the stories that you want to tell, things that are going to exist, um, you know, that are picking up on things currently, but are also will, can, will carry on forward. They're a note to the past. And it just brought up this idea of, you know, we have all these things that are kind of coming around. Um, so film photography being one of them, the resurgence of film, which, you know, Brooke talked about going from film to digital, the pull back to film, what, what that does for people. Um, I know Mike and Kiyoki both shoot a lot of film too. But looking at that and then also looking at what's happening in the surf world and like with this beautiful um, Craig shaped fish here, right? Like the, the popularity of these kind of um, alternative or retro whatever you want to call it surf craft where I, i'm just wondering am i the only one seeing that similarity where it's like i'm putting down my digital camera and picking up my 35 millimeter it's the same thing as like i'm leaving my thruster in the garage and i'm gonna go surf a, a 70 single fin or i'm gonna go surf a little um you know twin fishy thing out in the lineup but it's kind of this bigger idea i think of the surf community and how it, it always has been something small. And then with social media, um, with just kind of the advent of the globalization of surfing, it's not being, being a surfer can't be your whole personality anymore. Like you have to have more going on. There's more depth to it. So I'm, yeah, I'm curious with, with how you guys see in, in terms of the magazine, um, 
is it a surf magazine and what what is the role of surfing in the stories that you're telling sorry i know that's a lot but oh, no. it's it's funny how you can draw that comparison with uh you know film photography and you know you know surfing you know like retro style i think i think when <laughs> that yeah. people now their their eyes more into different Sorry. um but anyway um yeah so it's like different avenues that we can take to express ourselves um you know retro surfing it's definitely outside of the boundaries to you know progression you know three fins you know um, high performance anyway fishes longboards alayas like that's opening up our create creativity and how we want to ride waves so with being you know especially with social media photography film is another way that we can tell that story just like how another aircraft can tell that story of how you want to ride that wave so that comparison like it's it's all in the genre i believe it as art how we want to tell a story is unique and how and how we want to do that is you know completely up to us so um so yeah that's cool that how you can kind of see that comparison happening like taking you know pretty much one step back to you know express yourselves in a more authentic creative way yeah thanks yoki that's a great that's a great answer that's um yeah it it reminds me of something that Brooke kind of touched on in her talk and in your guys interview which is in the in the print issue in the new issue where Brooke, you're talking about um, kind of like everything that social media did for you and um, all the advantages it's provided. And, um, you know, that's something that if people follow Brooklyn Hoy um, from back in the Tumblr days through Instagram um, can see, but then something that one of your quotes in there that really resonated with me, it was like, you said that you have kind of made this decision that you don't want to be an influencer, you want to be an artist. And I'm just, Maybe you can talk a little bit more about that distinction, you know, and what what that kind of does for you as a creative in terms of your mindset approaching your work and how you want to share your work. Okay, so I think, yeah, that term influencer, like I never thought I would be considered that. I think we all have an influence if we're putting ourselves out there. I think it's a funny term um, and yeah, so kind of like to be put in that in that category was always awkward for me because I, I don't see myself as one of those people and like maybe I had a little stint where I was like, you know, working for hotels and like doing these little gigs and paid things and that was super cool because it got, it got me through those times. Um, but it's definitely never been something that I was pursuing or trying to, to do. Um, it's always been about art. It's always been about um, taking, taking the time to, to show, you know, my, my vision or my perspective. Um, and I think that when I kind of like pulled back and saw what influence Instagram actually had, um, social media has, that's when I was like, whoa, I don't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be all iPhone photos. It doesn't have to be like these reels that, you know, go viral or anything like that. It can still be about the art. It can still be about what I want to show and what I want to be seen as, because that's literally how people are seeing you these days. And even though that's a tough pill to swallow because it's so instant and fast and it's, it's not lasting in that way. Um, I think it's still cool to be able to meet new people and um, for people to see what I'm about. So I'm grateful for it, but I also think there's more and that's why I love the magazine. I love print. I love um, conversations because that's really like, you know, that's really where you, you take, you take what you're going to run with. And so, yeah, it's always been about the art. It's just, you know, you, you have a little, fun with Instagram sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. And then just to Mike quickly, because we're just kind of up against time here, but just to wrap us up, um, just wondering, kind of building off what Brooke said, um, you know, finding that thing that's unique for you or that thing going back to um, expressing something that's going to be authentic because that becomes something that's new, that's that's then valuable. That's not just the same thing you're seeing over and over, right? So when you and Kiyoki are starting Lost Not Found, when you're making this decision to leave um, your previous career to start on a creative endeavor, what what kind of is the gap that you guys identify that you wanted to fill? Like what what's the role that you see the magazine um, and Lost Not Found just as an idea generally? Um, what what is that for other people, and what has that meant for you? Um, I, I think it's uh, like a couple of things. One one, it's kind of what it means, what what are like kind of supporting what the mission are and our objectives are. Um, well, may, maybe more in a personal sense about what it means where the name Lost Not Found com comes from, but. Also, um, in, in the sense of a magazine, the kind of stories that we cover does, are those are the kind of things that we like. Like, for example, when we went to the Mexi log and we were shooting a bunch of people doing nose rides or and it was so such a beautiful landscape or wave and the sun was perfect and the person's backlit, which I like. And, and, you know, you capture that one moment at the right time. Arrowsy. <laughs> and, uh, and that feeling, you know, that good vibe is what we wanted to kind of continue. Um, and so in terms of where the magazine could fit, we felt, that we like single fins, we like riding fishes, we like the nostalgia of retro, we like riding mid lengths and we like shooting that, we like shooting it with film and we like doing different things as much as we can with film, combine that with um, a retro look with and, and a stylistic way of surfing, combine that with putting it in a print magazine, those are all the, those are all the things that we really love and to kind of put it all together. And we felt that there was no really, well, there, if you look really good, there's a lot of these kind of magazines and biggest one being Surfer's Journal, but we felt we weren't really in that same bucket. We kind of fill a little niche of, well, what Kyoki and I found out was we really like traveling to the different festivals or different spots with, you know, the athletes that surf these festivals or friends. Um, and, uh, you know, there wasn't really much going on covering or filling the niche of single fin longboarding or the lifestyle or the culture, combining it with film, combining it with, uh, um, I guess that kind of, uh, I guess what I, I feel like it's a momentum that's coming, circling back, which is, was the seventies and, and that style of, of longboarding and surfing. And then that's where we are. I guess that's where we're at. We're, we're trying to, um, build, you know, that our community to support that. And, uh, yeah. So, I mean, we have a lot. We still have a lot to learn. We still have a lot to grow. And this is definitely the baby stages of everything. And uh, yeah, we're really grateful for everyone who um, kind of really supports us and, and really likes what we're doing. So so yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of us in a nutshell. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, we, it really shows, I think, what sets you guys apart is that the, the stories are really personal. Um, so there's obviously being surfing, there's gonna be overlap with other things, but I think the, 
the specific approach, the level that you guys are going at, um, the personal investment, like you said, dealing with friends, with people um, traveling there personally as editors, as writers, as creatives behind the magazine. Um, it's a really cool project and encourage anybody who isn't familiar yet um, with Lost Not Found magazine to check them out, lostnotfoundmag.com. Uh, we have issues, back issues, and the current issue here at Treehouse, as well as the current photo display featuring a lot of Brooks photos and some photos from the other photographers um, featured in previous issues. Um, you can subscribe through the website, lostnotfoundmag.com. Um, check in on Instagram for those giveaways that Kiyoki and Mike mentioned earlier. And yeah, thank everyone who joined us this evening, anybody watching on YouTube um, in the future. And yeah, thank you guys for having us or for joining us today. Um, this is a really fun talk. Really cool to, to kind of see into the mind and the, and the heart of, of this project. Um, so thank you. Aloha, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. you, guys. Thanks, thank Brett. Brett. Bye. Hey, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> <laughs>